<clears throat> All right, let's build a pistol. Now, this pistol is going to be a little bit something special. Uh, not only is it a full-on custom gun uh, built from the ground up, it is a full-on custom gun with a Damascus stainless steel Damascus slide. Now this is a pretty hard to find slide. Uh, we're waiting on about 13, 14 months for a batch of these to come in. So the stainless steel Damascus slides are a little bit extra special right now. And that's what we're going to do. We've got a five inch full length dust cover with a tack rail and a steel grip. So this is going to be a really cool pistol. So the first thing I like to do is take some thousand grit paper, put some oil in there and clean up the rails, the inside rails on the slide and the frame. That way when I take my measurements, there's not any trash or, you know, bead blasting material or whatever. Just nice and clean. Now you really don't need gauges like this. Um, you can do it without them, but it, it sure makes life a lot more enjoyable when you can get some positive ID and some positive information <laughs> on your parts. So that is a slide rail gauge and it just goes right in there. Seven, 751 thousandths is our inside slide rail dimension. Sometimes I'll take it for multiple points because sometimes you can have a slide that's, that's cut wonky. And that one is true to the thousandth of an inch. That's what you want. Now the outside of the frame rails are pretty easy. Just put your calipers on there. 761. So it's ten thousandths wider. 761. So roughly five thousandths off each side. And we'll have a match made in heaven. So the concept here is pretty easy. The slide and frame are oversized. They have too much metal on them to go together. So I'm going to simply machine them down to within a thousandths or so, and then do a final hand fit with some different grades of emery paper and sandpaper to get that really slick, uh, tight fit. So the goal here is to get this machining down to as close as possible without it actually fitting together. You don't want to overfit it on the machine because if you cut it to where the slide and frame go together on the machine, then when you go to sand it and slick everything up, you're just going to be loosening it up by that much more. So you want to cut it to within probably about a thousandth and that will leave that much material for you to hand sand and hand fit and really get those parts to know each other. Uh, so it's critical not to overcut, <laughs> but it's also critical not to undercut because when you try to remove too much material by hand, that's when you start getting a little wonky, you start losing your straight edges, and it's just not good. So that sweet spot of machining to the correct uh, depths and levels is very, very critical. So stainless steel is generally a little bit gummier than uh, blue steel. And so you have to be careful when you're fitting stainless steel parts. Uh, they'll gall up, which is where that metal um, gets kind of a bite with the other piece of metal. And, and it just kind of snowballs and, and peels up a piece of metal and jams everything up. Uh, so you don't want to gall the metal. And so it's important not to over... It's important not to force the, the parts together. <laughs> you don't want to get that slide hammered onto that frame and then not be able to get it off because they basically almost friction welded each other together. Uh, but that's called galling. And the correct oil is really crucial in minimizing the amount of galling. Uh, you really don't want any galling, but uh, the correct oil really does help with that galling issue on stainless steel parts. I use a oil called FP10 or Firepower 10. And in my experience, that oil has uh, the best anti-galling properties in it for doing slide to frame fits. Now this is just a 90 degree jig that holds a uh, stone and I've got some thousand grit, 500 and thousand grit uh, oiled emery paper on here. And this fixture helps me hold the frame at a perfect 90 degree angle, keeping those slide rails nice and true. So it's just a process of uh, take a little material off, 
oil it, fit it, uh, and then see where it's hitting. And then just repeat until you get uh, the slide and frame on. The tricky part to fit in the slide and frame is knowing where to remove the material. Uh, in this example, it's either off the bottom of the slide or off the side of the frame rails. Um, it's a little bit tricky because uh, sometimes it can be both areas that are a little tight. Sometimes it's just one or the other and you don't want to remove material where you don't need it. And so it's really crucial to be able to, uh, you know, see those scratch marks where the slide and frame are going together and then uh, address those specific areas without removing material from everywhere else. And anytime you have a Damascus slide that's that's fit good, it's always a good feeling at the end of it because you didn't screw it up, <laughs> and you didn't you didn't scrap that slide that you waited 13, 14 months for. So this one feels really tight. I'm very happy with it, and another successful slide to frame fit. So this is a site tracker build, which means the barrel has an island on top of it. And so we need to machine out the slide portion that uh, allows for that island barrel to fit in there. This is one of my favorite setups, a five inch site tracker barrel. And this site tracker is the longest rib that they offer. It's a pretty aggressive cutout, which removes a lot of material from the slide, reducing the weight and then adding that weight on the barrel in a really well-balanced manner. <laughs> So after the sight tracker cut, uh, it's time to clean that area up. So I'm just going in here and breaking some edges, put some chamfers on things, uh, making sure that it's going to be a smooth slide riding around that sight tracker ribbed area. And then once I'm happy with the way the slide and barrel are fitting, uh, I'll move on to fitting the hood, and that's the side of the hood and the end of the hood. And then after the fitting of the hood, comes the bottom lug fitments, which is one of the most crucial parts of the gun build. So now I'm happy with the way the hood is fit, and it's time to move on to probably the most important part of the build, and that is fitting these bottom lugs. So there are some fixtures and jigs that you can use to help you fit these bottom lugs. I prefer to do it by hand. I just use a eight inch flat file and then a, a round file. And I feel like I have way more control doing it by hand this way. Uh, I'm, I'm never guessing as to what's going on in there when I put those, when I put those fixtures and jigs on there, sometimes you, you overcut without realizing it. But, but this way I'm always in control. I always know what I'm removing and where I'm removing it from, from and there's no guessing. And once again, we're to the part where you cut a little bit and fit. Cut a little bit, fit. <laughs> it's a pretty common practice. Uh, you remove a little bit of material at a time because it's a lot more difficult to put back on. It can be done, but uh, it's, it's definitely way better to get it right the first time. So right here we have the slide and frame fit, and then the barrel is also fit with the slide stop in it. Now this is a uh, kind of a first checkpoint, kind of a first major milestone of the, of the bones of the gun. So after the core of the gun is put together, uh, it's time to fit some small parts. And here we have the ejector, extractor, firing pin stop, firing pin. Uh, all that has to go together to get that back end blend done. So I got my Dremel, and uh, I'm just putting some bevels, some angles, some trimming, and kind of fitting all that together 
uh, as I go along. And so here we are with the second status update, so to speak, and we have the, the grip safety, the thumb safeties, the ejector, extractor, fire pin stop, uh, all of those are fit together, and now it's time to blend the back end of the gun. Now here's a tool that you can really get in trouble with. This is a Dynafile. It's basically sandpaper on a rope, uh, and... It's an excellent tool to have around, but man, it can really, uh, <laughs> it can get you in trouble if you don't watch out. We're going to do a little hand filing now on this muzzle end. It's very square, very sharp right now. So I'm going to take some tape and cover up these ports and the slide so that we don't get metal shavings uh, from our file down in there. Try to keep it as clean as possible. I like a pretty heavy bevel on my gun. Whenever you're going into your holster or drawing, uh, I don't want to get snagged. Being able to hand file a straight line or a, a, a cube with perfectly 90 degree sides is, is pretty difficult and it's a, it's a skill that doesn't come easy. 
you gotta file a lot, wear out a lot of files before you really get comfortable being able to put a, a truly straight line on something. It's really easy to put a bunch of different facets on there, a bunch of different angles uh, whenever you're filing because your hand gets tired or your file slips. Uh, but keeping that smooth all in one plane, that's the key to making it look nice. So we're just going to carry this nice chamfer all the way around. And that really, really sets the front of the pistol off, really makes a difference in the overall look. And there's the final product. We've got a nice bevel on there, nice and shiny. Line still straight. So the styling for this gun uh, is a little bit different when you're when you're trying to plan out a Damascus build because you don't want to hide the steel, the all that all those pretty lines and all that work that went into creating that Damascus. Um, so you don't want to overdo it with things like checkering and diamond serrations and stuff like that. It can distract away from the gun sometimes. In fact, if you look up Damascus guns, most of them are pretty plain as far as the slide serrations and slide cuts go. And that's because everyone wants to make that Damascus pop. So this one, uh, this is the first Damascus gun I've done with our quarter inch holes, uh, with the holes going all the way through to show the barrel. But we still have plenty of Damascus here. Uh, we have to cut the rear sight here, but there's gonna be a lot of that Damascus coming through in a nice high polish on the sides. And then we're gonna do a yellow gold or, or rose gold high polish on the barrel. So it's really gonna, really gonna jump through those holes. So it's time to start putting this pistol together for test firing. Uh, but first, we're gonna do something a little extra special, which I like to do for most of my custom guns and especially all my Damascus guns. And that is machine our own custom trigger shoe. So it'll be a one of a kind trigger shoe. I went ahead and machined a bunch of these blanks out a while back. So we're just gonna sharpie these up with a little design, take it over the mill and cut us up a trigger shoe. <clears throat> 
All right, so now we got the trigger job, and that's, I think, one of the last things we're going to do here before we go out and test fire. Um, so essentially, a trigger job is a pretty easy idea or concept to grasp. You've got your hammer with these hammer hooks that are about 20 thousandths, somewhere around there, tall. You've got your sear that engages with them. And when that sear gets pushed up like that by the hammer or by the trigger, the hammer falls. And so, pretty simple idea. If, if this is your hammer hook and this is the tip of your sear, if that tip, of, if the tip of the sear is at the tip of the hammer hooks, there's going to be almost no movement in there, and it's going to be a nice, clean release. Uh, the problem is you don't have a lot of uh, extra space in there. So if you drop the slide really aggressively or you shoot, just shoot the gun, that jarring can oftentimes just make that pop off of there. So it's not difficult to get a light trigger. It's difficult to get a light safe trigger. Uh, if you move the tip of that sear down the hammer hooks, you're going to feel all that drag. And that's going to be that slide in your trigger. So you want a clean break, but you want a safe trigger that doesn't go off when you don't want it to. And that, that's, that's a very difficult thing to master. Um, and you can uh, tweak it with almost every single part in there. You, you can adjust things on the sear, the disconnector, the hammer, um, the springs, the mainspring. There's so many different things that you can tune. Uh, and this is, this is one of the reasons why people get in such trouble when they go to upgrade their 1911. They think that going and buying all of these parts, high-end parts, say Wilson Combat or EGW or Extreme, like I'm using here, um, they think that just the parts can make the trigger job better. Well, if you're lucky, yes. But this, if I put these quality parts in my pistol, uh, the trigger job is not going to feel good at all. It, it's it's going to just feel like any other factory 1911. So it's all in tuning the parts that you have. You want to use... Quality parts, obviously, um, but the quality parts doesn't make the trigger job. The tuning does. pretty good. <clears throat> I don't get them perfect uh, just for test fire because we're going to break this all down and send it off for a coating. And most of the time when it comes back from coating, uh, you know, it doesn't feel exactly the same as when you send it off. So uh, I wait and do the exact final fine tuning uh, as I'm assembling the gun. So that's in the gun, and you can, you can work up and down. Um, it's very stiff. I'm going to give it a little bit more clearance. But you don't, uh, at least I don't want to do my final fit on it until I'm positive that my trigger job is complete. Because if I fit this thumb safety and then have to go back and retouch up that sear, um, that can deactivate your thumb safety because the sear and thumb safety are what, interface in there. And if you're moving that sear point around, you're lengthening or shortening. No, probably not lengthening. <laughs> you're going to be shortening that sear. Uh, so I'll do my final sear and trigger job and final thumb safety uh, once everything is finalized. <laughs> 